What's going on guys, John Elder here from Konami.com and in this video, we're going to continue building out our flashcard app with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to continue building out our flashcard app. We'll randomize this image after we make an answer. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash a like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so up until now, we've got our flashcards, and we can type in a, an answer, so Nebraska. And if we click the answer, it says correct but then the image doesn't auto update to the next state. Now we can click this pass button. And when we do that, this disappears and the next one comes, but that's kind of clunky and we don't really want to keep it that way. So in this video, that's what we're going to work on randomizing this thing. And we might spruce this up a bit too and uh, change the uh, layout of this a little bit if we have time as well. So, okay, let's take a look at our code. Up until now, what we do is we click the capitals the states button it runs the state function. And that's when we randomize our list here and create and, and sort of pull up the first flashcard. Well, what we want to do now is kind of break this whole part away from the states function and create its own function that we can then just call whenever we want. So if we want to randomize a state at any time, we don't have to rerun the whole state function, we could just randomize or we could just call the randomize function. So what we want to do is let's come up to the top here and let's create randomizing state function. And we can define it as uh, random underscore state. And it's a function. Now, what do we want to put in here? Well, let's come back down here to our states thing. We want to, let's see, we don't need to pack the frame. What we want to do is grab this where we're creating our list of states. We want to grab the randomization stuff and we want to grab some of this stuff as, as well. So I'm going to copy this and I'm just going to, for now, comment out all of this stuff and we'll come back and delete what we don't want to keep later on. But some of this we are going to want to keep. So we'll have to come back here and fiddle with these last two lines specifically. Well, actually, let's not. Let's just uncomment these right now. And we're going to need to tweak this thing, but this one will stay the same. And we'll look at these in just a second. So, okay, so I've copied all of this. Let's come up here to our random state. Be sure to tab over and make sure these all line up. So, okay, so we want to, so we're creating our list of states. Here we're randomizing them. And now here we're actually putting that on the screen. All right, so here we're creating the, the state image. And here we're putting it onto a label. But we don't want to do it like that. What we want to do is come down here to where we first created this label. And instead of putting it on the screen, we just want to define it. So it's defined in our states function. And it's packed onto the screen in our states function, even though we haven't actually done it yet, right? Sort of like when we create a blank label and just put it there so that later we can dot config to change it. And that's what we want to do. We want to come up here and dot config this guy. So this stays the same, but here we'll go show underscore state dot config. And then we want to put an image equals, oops, I'll spell that right, image equals our state image right here. All right, so then we can comment out these two things. And we don't need to pack these. In fact, we can just get rid of these. So we're creating this image from all of our random stuff and then configuring it because it already exists right here. Make sense? Okay, so now we need to call our random state function at certain times. So the first thing we wanna do, the first time we wanna call it is right here. All right, so right when our states function gets run the first time, the frame gets created, and then we wanna call this random thing, the, the flashcard image has already been created here, sort of. And then when we call this, this function gets called and then that should work. So let's save this just to make sure this worked for the first time. So let's run our flashcards app. Go to geography states and it did not, we got an error. 
show state is not defined on line 24 and line 64. Okay, so let's see. Line 24 show state. So what we need to do is make this guy a global. So global show underscore state. All right, save this. That should work now. Come back here. Let's run this guy again. Geography states. Boom, Vermont. Now, if we, we can still pass, and that still works. If we type in Texas, though, this is not going to auto update, right? And also, let's change this here from correct to correct. The answer was Texas or something like that. So let's just change that real quick. Let's pull back up our code, and that's going to be in here. Correct. We can concatenate. We could just print out this whole thing. Or incorrect. <laughs> concatenate that whole thing. All right, let's save that and make sure that worked. So geography states, blah, blah, blah. incorrect, Vermont, All right? Oh, it's lowercase. Let's fix that. That's going to bother me. So our states dot rando in Ruby, it's titleize. Let's just check dot title, see if that is. I can't remember. I might have to look it up. All right, so that should make the first letter Oops, let's go states. So let's go Texas. Correct, Texas. Uh, let's try this again. Incorrect. There we go. Yeah, so Texas. So we also need to do that for uh, where we go. This one dot title. Okay, so that's a little better. So now we want to update the thing every time we click the answer button, right? So to do that, we just need to call our random function right here at the bottom of our answer, our state answer function. All right, so let's save this and run this guy. All right, so states, blah, 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 boom, incorrect, Nebraska. So here, Vermont, but now notice when we click the answer button, correct Vermont, but Vermont is still here. So we still need to clear this thing as well. So let's do that real quick. And we could just come down here to our, let's see, show state. And what's the name of our input box? It is, let's see, answer input. So we can just grab this and come back up to our rando thing here. And let's just uh, clear the entry box. So that would be dot delete, and we want it from zero to end. Okay, so that should do that. Okay, so save this, let's run it again. So geography, uh-oh. Answer input not defined. All right, well, that's weird. So let's just pull this out of here and instead slap it right here in our state answer. Okay, let's give this a try. Monday morning, it's going slow. Geography states, something, something, answer, incorrect, Oregon. California, answer correct, California. So that disappears, that changes, and we're good to go. And that still works. Okay, so coming right along. Now, this is all gray in the background. Maybe we wanna change this to white since the background image of this is white. So we can do that real quick. Let's just grab our frame here. And let's see, states frame, hide all frames, state frame pack. Let's see, that would be down at the bottom here. State frame capital. All right, so when we're defining our frame, so we can just go BG equals, and let's go white, save this and run it. Now when we click the states, everything is white. But now we've got some weird stuff going on here. And we've got this box around here, maybe we don't want that. And also, this frame is kind of hard to see. So let's knock these out one at a time. First, let's do with the image thing here. Uh, let's pull that up. And so we want to, in our rando, randomize random state function here, when we create this image, show state config, we can go BG equals white, 
save this and run it to make sure that worked. All right, so now there's no border around there. Uh, now we've got this label and when we click answer, its background is gray, so that's no good. So we can change that. So that would be in our states function and global answer right here. Let's just go BG equals white. Save this and run it. Zoom. All right, so that's gone. And if we type in Kentucky, correct Kentucky, there's it's all white there. Now, finally, this thing needs a better border because the whole bottom part of it is missing, it seems like, right? So we can change that. That's our entry box. And that's also in our states function, I think. Answer, where'd it go? Answer input right here. So state frame font, here we can go BD equals two, or border, border equals two. If we run this, now we've got a border below there. And you can make this as thick as you want. You know, if we wanted to change this to five, it would probably look ugly. <laughs> But we could change it to five, save it, run this guy again. All right, so it's real thick, right? I don't like that at all. So I'm gonna change that back to two, save it, run it. And uh, coming right along. So we got Nebraska. Now you don't have to do this. You don't have to make all this white if you want. I just thought, hey, we're, we're playing around with this. Let's do something to change this up a bit. Still got our menu up here, right? So however you want to do it doesn't matter. That's just an aesthetic thing. But that's how you would do it if you wanted to change this to white or whatever. So I think that's all for the state guy here. In the next video, we'll knock on the state capitals where we won't enter things into a box like this. We'll have some radio buttons with some like multiple choice because who knows off the top of their heads what the state capital is of Florida, for instance. But if you had a multiple choice, list of three or four or five uh, cities, you could probably guess easier that way. So we'll start to do that in the next video. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which really helps the channel out. And I really appreciate it. And check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 90,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com and we'll see you in the next video.